In this video here, we're going to talk about Mask RCMN. This is another model that can be used just as YOLO 11 or the other YOLO models for basically just detecting objects and instance segmentation. So we're going to take a look at it. We can do some comparisons, see together with the YOLO models as well. We'll go into the details, how the Mask RCMN model works, but also how it differs from the YOLO model, why the YOLO model might have better performance on your project, but also why it's significantly faster to run, but also easier to work with. So let's just jump straight into this blog post here that we have. You can go in and read more about it. We have blog posts covering tons of different things. We have all available down in the description. We have all the documentation, all the videos on the YouTube channel, pretty much covering everything that you need for learning computer vision, being a computer vision engineer, creating projects end to end with every single element in the computer vision pipeline. But in this video here, we have this blog post. There's a ton of cool visualization and so on that we're going to use basically just to explain how this mask RCNN model works. So first of all here, we can actually see that these models that were introduced by Facebook AI research. Back in the days, this has been like a very good model for a long time, but we can see it's back from 2017 and there's been done a lot of iterations on top of it to make it both faster to do instant segmentation, update detection, basically just try to improve the speed because the main bottleneck for this model here is basically like the speed, but also how to train it. Then on top of that, YOLO models came and so on, they became better and better. They started the state of the art models right now, which you take into account like overall performance, both speed, accuracy wise, and simplicity of training the models. We still have the YOLO 11 model as the front runner there. If you scroll a bit further down, we can see the difference between update detection and segmentation. The RCNN models, they support update detection, and then we have the Marsh RCNN which does also um, instant segmentation. So this is the difference with instant segmentation. We also get a segmentation mask where we classify every single pixel of that specific object as a class. So we get a mask around our objects instead of just a bounding box that is fitted around the whole object. This is very important in a lot of computer vision applications and projects out there where we need the exact location of our object. So let's take a look at the architecture from Mask RCNN and how it works. So it's basically also a convolutional based network where we basically just have a filter running on our images, the exact same as YOLO. It's also convolutional based, but it has some different variations in the architecture. But what they have in common is pretty much that there is a feature extractor. So this is the backbone of our neural network. So often when we work with computer vision models, we have a backbone, which is basically just a feature extractor. We're going to go into details, then we can have a neck and also a head on top of that for basically generating the output mask, classes, confidence scores, and all that. For update detection, we can also have multi-stage, so two-stage detector that does region proposal, which what, what, what we're doing here. And then we have the YOLO models, which is basically just a single shot detector, everything in one go. That's why it's so fast and then we can run these models so fast because it's pretty much just one pass through our model and that's it. We get the results and then we process the next frame. So we have an input image here with some image format. Then we have a ResNet backbone in the mask RCNN model, which is act as a feature extractor. Then the output from the ResNet model is a feature map. So ResNet architecture, you can use ResNet, tons of different variations. This is probably one of the best and most used one, but there's other ones as well. Inception Net, SSD, tons of different variations out there, but ResNet is probably the most used one and is still a really good feature extractor today. So that basically just extracts all different features. There could be lines, different features. Like if you're detecting cars, we could start like in the early layers, we started to detect corners, lines, different features, like low level features. And then we start to go higher or like deeper into layers and we start to get more high level details. Then it will start to combine it into wheels, windows, side mirrors, and so on. And then we will end up with our feature map. Then on top of our feature map, here we have our region proposal network. So it's basically just extracting proposals of bounding boxes and objects directly here on the site. So this is a two step. And then we have a region of interest alignment where we combine our region proposals with our feature map. 
Then we have a number of fully connected layers after each other, a convolutional neural network or like a convolutional layer. It's basically just, we have a filter, we take our image, so we have an image here, and then we just apply a filter, stride it over our whole image, and basically just calculate uh, and do dot product calculations on our images. So it's basically just a filter, so we boil it all the way down to extract even more features and the exact locations. And then we have our head here at the top where we just extract our binding boxes, classes, masks, and so on. And that's usually, or it's basically just like an ANN, so an artificial neural network that sits at the end. We just have the near end, we have the weights connected to each other, and then that's going to output the results here. So the mask, class, boxes, confidence scores, all of that, we can extract that at the late layers. So this is also acting as a feature extractor, but this is more for aligning the two um, the two steps here. The YOLO model, you go into architecture and so on, we have videos for that as well, and also the documentation, but it's basically just a ton of convolutional layers, doing some magic here and there, and then we have the neck, and we also have a head on top of it to get the output results. So starting with feature extraction, we already went over that, potential errors with the image in the, the optics, so this is the region proposal network that I just talked about as well. So we, we find some features here based on our input image, as we can see here. So this is a feature map, then based on the feature map, we go in and extract proposals. So we try to find potential regions that we could be interested in, draw our bounding boxes around it. We have our feature map, and then we pretty much just merge those together with convolutional layers, and then we find our mask, bounding box, and confidence score, and also the class later on with our standard uh, neurons and also weights. So here's a very good example. We can see there's a region of interest alignment. We have the convolution layers, we get our class box, and then we'll end up with the mask. So first of all, we just have the region, and then we use the convolutional layers to find the act like pixels that only contains this object. So we get a perfect mask at the boundaries of our object instead of just our bounding boxes. This is why it both works with update detection, insta-segmentation and so on, and why you could build this segmentation model on top of the original update detection model. And then we can go ahead and classify the objects and predict their mask as well. If we go a bit further down, we can see that it is not perfect, this one here for sure. We get some mispredictions here and there, but it's still a very good model. It's not as fast as the YOLO model, it's not as easy to train and so on. The results are not as, as good either, but it's very good to know the different variations, but also just how do the models work under the hood. So here we see some of the limitations. I already went through that. So high computational demand is slower to process it compared to the YOLO models. They also need way more high quality data and also a lot more data than the YOLO models. They take way longer to train, how to set up the training pipeline with analytics is just a single line that we have gone through in all the other videos. Complex implementation, I said that as well, so it's a multi-stage architecture, the YOLO is just a single shot uh, update detector. If you take a look at it down here, we also have some comparisons, so it's probably like uh, further down here at the bottom, where we see the YOLO models, they are state of the art, probably expect the mass RCNN models, they will be down here with the efficient detection, efficient detection uh, models. So these single shot detectors, they're significantly better, they're faster, so definitely just go with that. But it's always good to know different variations, what's out there, what are the possibilities, how do the models work on the hood. But with analytics, you can go ahead and test it out, try it out in just a few lines of code. You have all the resources available, you have your model, then you can focus on building the computer vision systems around it. Hope you learned on this video here. Make sure that you understand this. This is necessary if you're a computer vision engineer, interested in computer vision, knowing how these models work under the hood. Go through it again, look at different GitHub repos, look at the implementation, go through the architecture, learn some of the fundamentals behind it. And then I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.